In the previous video, when we were covering aerobic respiration, I told you that the link reaction, Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation, together with chemiosmosis, happens in the mitochondria. So we are going to look at the structure of the mitochondria and explain how these particular characteristics allow the mitochondria to carry out the process quite efficiently. If you remember the mitochondria, it has the outer membrane. It's a double membrane organelle. It has a smooth outer membrane and a folded inner membrane. And it has its own circular naked DNA. Um, and it also has 70S ribosomes, which I've highlighted. So let's focus on the circular DNA and 70S ribosomes. Because it has its own circular DNA and 70S ribosomes, they can work together to carry out protein synthesis. How is protein synthesis happening? Well, the circular DNA will undergo a process known as transcription to produce the mRNA, and the mRNA will move towards the 70S ribosomes and undergo translation, and it produces the proteins. You may be wondering what kind of proteins do the mitochondria need to produce or synthesize, and they will usually synthesize enzymes needed in respiration. So remember, respiration, for example, the link reaction Krebs cycle and also oxidative phosphorylation, it's not just three steps. There are multiple steps within each of those process, and all those steps require their specific enzymes. So the mitochondria's function is to actually synthesize those enzymes, and they can do it by themselves, by the way. So that's a good thing. Number two is the matrix. The matrix is a space where it's the site of link reaction and Krebs cycle. And the third part, which I've highlighted in a pink area here, these finger-like structures are known as the cristae. And the cristae are the folded regions of the inner membrane. In biology, when something is folded, it's usually to increase the surface area. But to increase the surface area of what exactly? When you have a folded region to form the cristae, the mitochondria is able to contain more electron transport chain and ATP synthase because that's where the ETC and ATP synthase are located. So when you have more ETC and ATP synthase, the mitochondria can carry out more oxidative phosphorylation and chemiosmosis. Then you also have the outer membrane. It forms a partially permeable membrane that only allows specific molecules to enter the mitochondria. For example, pyruvate. If you remember, pyruvate is produced in glycolysis uh, in the cytoplasm, and it only allows the pyruvate to enter, uh, cross through the outer membrane, and then enter the matrix. Right? Uh, reduced NADs will be able to do so as well. If you look here in this inner membrane, the cristae or the inner membrane. Notice I'm drawing out all these weird looking structures. Now, if you look at it in the elect uh, electron microscope, you will be able to see this kind of weird stalks, all right? We call it stalks, and the scientists will refer to it as something known as stalked particles. And the stalked particles are just essentially ATP synthesis. And as you can see, because the inner membrane is folded, it has more stocked particles or ATP synthase. And logically, when you have more ATP synthase, what happens to you know, ATP production? Obviously, it can increase. That is why it's quite interesting to note that the more folded your mitochondria is, the more efficient it is in producing or synthesizing ATP. That's all we have to know about the adaptation of the mitochondria, by the way. There's nothing much to actually mention about that. 